In volume 20 of Key's Dive Guide, we visited La Capitana, a King's Galleon and one of the two flagships of the 1733 Armada. Built in 1730 in Havana, Cuba, La Capitana was a 500-ton monster with over 60 cannon ready to protect her immense payload of gold and silver. Many of her 225 passengers were swept away in the disaster. Since she sank in 20 feet of usually crystal clear water, much of her treasure was recovered by the Spanish in 1734. After the Spanish concluded their salvage efforts, La Capitana slumbered peacefully as one of Florida's first artificial reefs for 204 years. Then, in 1938, commercial fisherman Reggie Roberts brought hard hat diver Art McKee to a mound of round river rock, 120 feet long, 50 feet wide, and over six feet tall in the sand near Davis Reef. A huge 20-foot anchor, cannon, and other coral-encrusted artifacts dotted the ballast. Ship's timbers jutted out of the mound in several places. After correspondence with Spain's Archive of the Indies in Seville, McKee received a copy of an old chart depicting the locations of many more shipwrecks of the ill-fated 1733 fleet. This chart led Art to believe that he had rediscovered El Ruby Segundo, La Capitana of the Doomed Armada. Art was a genius at understanding the old Spanish chart. Using a compass and sextant like the Spanish mariners who preceded him, he rediscovered San Pedro and El Infante of the 1733 fleet, recovering innumerable artifacts from these wrecks as well. Art worked La Capitana tirelessly for over 15 years, recovering thousands of pillar dollars, over 10,000 silver pieces of eight, and a gold escudo dated 1721. Art recovered so many silver bars during this period, he got the nickname Silver Bar McKee. Because of a chemical reaction between silver and salt water, a black residue called silver sulfide forms on the outside of these silver coins, making them look like small charcoal briquettes. In 1949, Art built a museum on Plantation Key to display the treasures he had recovered during his explorations. He also worked with the Smithsonian in creating the museum's marine archaeological exhibit, a window for millions of people to see shipwreck recoveries and learn more about shipwreck history. Art, along with Smithsonian curator Mendel Peterson and salver Ed Link, developed many of the tools for modern treasure salvage diving, including the underwater metal detector and the jet propulsion vehicle. Art took thousands of people to La Capitana in his glass bottom boat. Guests could snorkel around and above the remains of a centuries old Spanish galleon, clouded by fish. Art spent the rest of his life educating the world about the Spanish treasure galleons. Although Art McKee passed away on June 26, 1980, his legend will live on forever. Art gave America its first look at treasure being recovered from a Spanish galleon. Every modern treasure salver, underwater archaeologist, or weekend wreck diver owes a debt of gratitude to Art Silver Bar McKee, the father of modern treasure salvage. Art McKee's diving exploits live on through his grandson, my dive buddy Terry Ballard. In 1995, at the age of seven, 
Terry was the world's youngest wreck diver. In the upcoming Keys Dive Guide Volume 23, Art's daughter Karen McKee will be joining us for a two-tank dive on San Francisco and La Almiranta near Long Key Point. Karen owns and operates McKee Museum in Tavernier, carrying on her father's tradition of shipwreck education. It was minted from the silver from the Concepcion Galleon that was recovered by Sir William Phipps off the Dominican Republic in 1687. The museum showcases many interesting recoveries from the 1733 Spanish treasure fleet. Famous treasure salver Jack Haskins found this outstanding medallion in the sand near La Capitana. Thought to have been the property of a high-ranking Catholic church official, this medallion is considered to be one of La Capitana's most significant finds. Commercial airline pilot Mick O'Connor displays a beautiful child's rosary he recovered on January 17, 1995, just inshore of La Capitana. Mick was diving with Don Washington, who held the legitimate lease to the wreck site. The building that housed the original McKees Museum on Plantation Key is now called Treasure Village, a collection of retail shops near Mile Marker 87. The 20-foot Capitana anchor that Art recovered still graces the front of the building, although it is rapidly deteriorating. Let's ease down to somewhere in time another superb shipwreck museum in the Isla Mirada area. Owner Dick Holt has an outstanding collection of artifacts from the 1733 fleet, including this intact olive jar from La Capitana. Other Capitana artifacts include a fid which was used for splicing line, a musket ball mold, an incendiary spike shot which was wrapped in tar, lit, and then fired at enemy vessels. A belt buckle fused to a ballast stone. This is a sounding lead used for checking depth. Grease was put in the hole to gather a sample of the bottom, thus indicating the composition of the ocean floor. The navigation dividers used by the pilot of La Capitana. And finally, these small signal cannon were used to send messages to other ships of the fleet in the form of smoke signals. In Volume 20 of Key's Dive Guide, we visited San Jose y Las Animas, located about one mile from El Infante. She's in 30 feet of water completely covered by a three to five foot sand blanket, making her an uninteresting dive site for recreational divers. San Jose was built in the New England colonies in 1728. Displacing 326 tons, she was nicknamed El Conde, or the Count. She carried 30,435 pesos in silver specie and bullion. Her manifest indicates she was heavily overburdened with a huge consignment of organic cargo. In the fury of the hurricane, San Jose was swept between Davis and Little Conk reefs. On the outside edge of Hawk Channel, her stern smashed aground. She lumbered on for 200 yards before sinking, bow facing seaward, stern facing shoreward. Let's check out the wreck site 260 years after the disaster. The elbow-shaped device surrounding the prop of this salvage vessel is called a mailbox. The ship assumes a four-point anchor, making her a mobile. Then, the captain revs up the engine of the vessel as the mailbox directs the powerful prop wash down to the ocean bottom. This blows away four feet of sand overburden that covers the oak frame of this ancient galleon. Descending on the frame of San Jose, the keelson, a support timber for the keel, is clearly visible. The keel is the main longitudinal timber of a ship and is buried in the sand a few feet beneath the keelson. Her ribs are supported by stout riders. It is clearly evident that we're in a four to five foot hole in the sandbar. 
The compound ribs of San Jose are composed of four to five component parts called footocks. These support timbers are called ground footocks or cheek piece fillers. Wooden ships were not watertight. The rougher the seas, the more water they would take on. Ancient shipwrights carved drainage passageways called limber holes in the inner bilge of a ship's frame, usually in the first footock, close to the keel. This helped to prevent dry rot by allowing water to pass between the ribs toward the manual bilge pumps that remove the water from the hold of the ship. These timbers are called bilge ceiling planks or sleepers. The thick floor planks attached to the ribs that separate the inner bilge from the hold where ballast stones were added for stability. The wooden components of a ship were fastened with round wooden nails, especially in areas exposed to water. These marine nails were called trenels, a contraction of the words tree nails. Trenels would not rust or loosen like iron nails. When immersed, the wood would absorb a little water causing it to swell. This made a tight-fitting nail. Often mistakenly called the Teredo worm, the Teredo is actually a wood-boring bivalve related to clams that thrives in tropical waters. These termites of the sea will destroy the structural integrity of a ship by boring through and constructing tubes in her wooden components. It's possible that this infestation helped hasten San Jose's demise. Although no gold or silver was recovered today, a Kingside Dynasty pottery shard links San Jose with the Manila fleet whose goods were loaded in Veracruz, Mexico several months before she went down. The true treasure of the 1733 wreck sites is the ability to step back in time, if only for a few minutes, and explore the secrets and beauty of the grave sites these galleons picked to spend eternity, 280 years ago. San Jose will continue to sink deeper over time. After this salvage ends, a few changes of the tides will completely cover her again.